Okay, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> good morning and welcome. Let's pray and let's continue with our um, uh, session on the anointing. So can one of the online students for a change lead us in prayer today? Please unmute and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time that you have given us to learn your word in supernatural manifestations, Lord. We pray that your word will inspire us deep down in our spirit, my master, to know all the truth, my master, that you will lead us in the way you want us to go and that to experience every word that you are teaching us in our lives, my master. We thank you for all that our teacher is doing for us, my master, teaching us in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Sister Gertrude. All right, so we'll uh, get back into the topic of anointing. And we've been looking at this as one of the keys for the manifestation of the supernatural. And we talked about how uh, the anointing flows align to God's grace and gifting on our lives. The anointing accompanies God's word. We must consecrate ourselves or dedicate ourselves more and more to God as we journey through life and that causes a greater release of the anointing. And we also talked about expectation. When one holds expectation, there is a greater flow of the anointing. Um, we discussed that there can be measures of anointing. That means that anointing can be of various levels over people's lives. And we saw examples of people such as Moses, the 70 elders, Elijah, Elisha, and so on. And there can be different kinds of anointing uh, expressing the work of God. So teaching anointing, healing anointing, you know, uh, miracle anointing, um, prophetic anointing. So it's expressing uh, a certain way in which God is working at that time. Uh, and so as we understand which anointing it is, it will enable us to operate in it in a better way. So today, let's continue from there. We said that uh, faith, uh, sorry, anointing can grow. Anointing can uh, definitely increase. That's why we looked at all these, these ways in which you know one can uh, grow the anointing. Remember, we said, uh, according to our gifting, uh, we said, when we invest more time in God's word, then um, uh, we also said, the more we give ourselves to God in submission, consecration, and expectation. So these were the, the main ways in which anointing can increase. And as uh, we yield to the anointing also, we'll see that the measure of the anointing is increasing. So simple example can be something like prophetic anointing. When first we start out prophesying, the anointing is there to some level degree it is there. But the more we flow in it, what happens? There's a greater level of the prophetic anointing which manifests in our midst. Same way, applicable even to teaching. So we are functioning at one level but the more we are engaging in it it just increases and increases or you know leading worship um it just increases someone who is ministering with a certain anointing now suddenly seems to be ministering with a greater anointing so keep doing what god has called you to do that's the key okay and the anointing will increase uh, now Let's talk about impartation. That's where a lot of us have questions. And this term impartation is becoming very popular these days. In fact, uh, in one of our uh, sermons, we've talked about impartation. So you can get the notes from the apcwo.org website from the resources section. So you can simply go to sermons and there you will get the entire notes on the subject of impartation. Now, what is impartation? See, impartation is basically a transference of anointing. So anointing can be transferred 
the same anointing a category of anointing can be transferred to another person right so that is what impartation uh, is all about now people have all kinds of understanding about how this transfer actually happens so let's consider you know what what are some uh, biblical truths about this transference first truth is that though impartation happens it will only happen aligned to god's gift and calling on our lives okay so that means that suppose i am not called to a certain thing okay imagine a person who cannot sing like just cannot sing they try hard but they cannot sing now if they go and you know they want to get the anointing of um, uh, some major singer right like matt redman or uh, paul baloch like they go to them and they want to catch their anointing even if there's a transfer of the anointing it may not result in this person being able to sing because that's not the primary gifting that god has given that person so again what we said earlier applies align to the gift of god grace of god on that person's life the anointing will be transferred so though uh, you know these are all singers or worship leaders it won't be that kind of anointing that this other person receives okay are you all getting what i'm trying to say yeah so it will only be aligned to what we are called to do so let's imagine you know there's there's a, a mighty teacher of god's word but our anointing is more of administration now we may receive an impartation of the anointing from this teacher man of god or woman of god but it will it will not necessarily be like the kind that they have it will be aligned to my call and my gift so it the same anointing may strengthen me in my gifts in my area of gifting so that's how the impartation happens but what is the wrong view that people have the wrong view about impartation people have is that when they receive an impartation from someone they'll become like that person you know if if i received uh, a, an impartation from billy graham i should become billy graham you know i'll preach like billy graham i'll move like billy graham uh so i'll do ministry like billy graham or i receive an impartation from reynard bonke or some you know any just any man of god woman of god you you talk about people imagine that will become like them but that's not true anointing can be transferred but it will only operate aligned to god's gift and call over our lives so that is something to clarify next anointing can be imparted through association okay so we see that happen in scripture so generally like when you look at um, moses and joshua since joshua spent so many years with moses there was an impartation over his life yes his leadership looked very different from moses's leadership his assignment was different but association does bring a transference of the anointing elijah elisha another very classic example and we know clear cut that you know double portion of elijah's anointing so what is that a double measure of impartation through association why did only elisha get it why not anyone else because there is association so with association also we we can see a transfer of the anointing now uh, it need not be a transfer only from a like a man of god woman of god it can even be our association with the ministry like if we are reading their books or listening to uh, their their um, music their preaching teaching there can be a transference of the anointing from that ministry also so this is a reality so it can happen and it happens through association 
Yes, a question. Yes, uh, was it like initiated by uh, Elisha that got him the double anointing, or was it like initiated by the Holy Spirit who put that desire in Elisha's heart? Mm -hmm. Uh yeah, that's a tough question. Like I can't think of any scripture um, to back my answer, but my view is both. Yeah, because Elisha was called into ministry, isn't it? So that doesn't come just by our desire. I'm sure God's call was there and he had a desire um, which came from Holy, the Holy Spirit. But the good thing is that by watching Elijah, Elisha started desiring also. And desire is a very big, it's a very big key in the operation of the supernatural. When we desire, we see, we desire God, I want to see the manifestation like that. The desire will pull. He earnestly desire the gifts, Paul wrote. So desire will also pull the anointing. It's applicable, yeah. yeah. So we generally say when we see something, right, in a ministry or uh, in a person's life, which is good, uh, it's, it's okay to desire. Okay, not to say that I want to become like them, but we see the values, we see the principles, we see, you know, uh, the manifestation of the spirit in their lives. Many people we see. Every time we see something good, we can say, God, I really like it. I want to, I want to be like that. I want to have that. I want to release that anointing. So it's, it's fine. God knows what he wants to give and he will give. Yeah, we can desire. We can desire. Yeah, sure. Okay, so yes, association will also uh, draw the anointing. Uh, online students, if you have any questions, please feel free, just unmute and ask directly. Okay, so yeah, I'll continue. Now, when it comes to impartation, impartation will happen in a measure. So uh, while it's true that we can receive a particular anointing, it won't be the full anointing that somebody has. For example, uh, Moses and the 70 elders, the same leadership anointing was put on them. But how did it manifest? The kind of leader that Moses was, it was at a different level. But the 70 elders, their responsibilities and assignment was very different. So leadership anointing, but it's a different measure. Maybe for our understanding, we can say maybe a smaller measure of what Moses was carrying. Okay, So anointing gets transferred, but it can be at a measure of what one actually has. Now, even if it's not just the... the um, uh, leadership anointing, if you look at Moses' anointing itself, he prayed and there was an impartation of the anointing, right? He, Moses carried many anointings. You know, he was a deliverer, he was a leader, he was a prophet. But we don't see the 70 elders manifest all these things. They were only providing guidance and, uh, you know, resolving people's issues and, and leaders over people. So you can also we can also say one part of the anointing that Moses had was transferred to the 70 elders. So the point is 100% of the anointing that a person has or a ministry has will not be just transferred like that to another person. Got it? Yeah, sure. Uh, let me go Yeah, to the online uh, students. Yes, yes, Andrew. Teacher, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, the question was like, uh, uh, I'm in, uh, like some example, someone is in the music ministry, mm. so but I don't have any knowledge of music, something like that. Mm. Then uh, I hold on to the word of God saying that, ask and you shall receive it. So mm. I'm asking God, God, I want to become a, a music, uh, like I want to grow in it. I want mm. that anointing. So will God give me or... Uh, is it according to the aligned God's gift, like what you were saying? So it will go like that. Mm. Uh, so yes, Andrew, it is aligned to the gift, the calling of God over our lives. Now, if it's not aligned, uh, 
see if we have the interest maybe we can learn a little bit and sing a little bit but not beyond that okay. it may not be the way we are desiring it to okay. manifest okay thank you teacher thank you what andrew thank you thank you so much teacher okay sure sure yes thank you yes uh, any other questions yes uh, daniel daniel is saying i recently went to a meeting in delhi in which impartation was done from the stage pastor was telling from stage to receive it but i couldn't feel anything what can be the reason i took one more person with me that person was person told that he received but no change seen in that person also till date okay so uh, uh daniel see the thing is transference of anointing is possible it is possible now if whoever this pastor is by faith they prayed over people for a release of the anointing over their lives it can be transferred to the people so that's a reality and people can also receive it that's also another reality but having said that we will not be we may not see a tangible um expression like see now somebody prayed somebody laid hands over me and prayed i may not feel anything so we should not go by feelings it's a matter of faith even when paul writes to the galatians um i think it's galatians 3 galatians 3 where where he says that you've received the spirit by the hearing of faith so it's all by faith we receive the spirit by faith we operate in the gifts of the spirit uh, or we operate in the the gifts of grace the grace of god in proportion to our faith you know romans 12 verse 6 so impartation is done by faith and impartation is received by faith so what i'm trying to tell you is if we have received by faith even if we didn't feel anything don't worry about it right if the fruit will manifest sooner or later just trust in the lord and keep doing what god has called you to do you will see the fruit later on whether it is your friend or you so we can't like in one day say ha ah, which impartation i got or uh, how much impartation it's very difficult to answer that uh, question like that it's all about the fruit from the life of the people who have received the impartation i i hope that makes sense daniel let me know if you have any follow up questions to that yes right thank you yes vimal ma'am what if uh god's impartation oh, sorry impartation is different mm -hmm. and god's calling is different mm -hmm. yeah so then see what we are desiring will um we can still receive the anointing see I, for example i see a mighty man of god okay and i desire the anointing on their lives and uh, i pray right i desire i pray even they they want to release that anointing i will surely receive from that person's life but the anointing that i have received will work the way i need it for my ministry but there'll be fruit yeah we have to work on it and uh, surely i'll receive but it won't look like what that person had see good example is um, uh john the baptist john the baptist is said to have the uh, the spirit of elijah he came with the spirit of elijah transference of the anointing transference of the anointing after many hundreds of years can you imagine the anointing of elijah carried to john the baptist who was born much later and look at the ministries of both of these people so different so different elijah prophetic ministry full of miracles john the baptist is the way maker anointing you know calling people to repentance and believe in jesus anointing is elijah's anointing but manifestation is so different we can't even tell by the manifestation yes it depends on our calling so we will receive when we desire we will receive but it will manifest aligned to our calling same three prophecies also because mm. uh, 
uh, some prophets used to prophesy like you will become like this and this mm. but they are uh, after that they are not in that position mm. so it because of maybe they didn't work on that yes they just receive but we have to work on that. that's also true that's also true so we receive the anointing but if the people uh, don't move forward with faith or they don't nurture it even then it will not manifest yeah sure yes yes Asked, mm -hmm. like impartation are there any ways for us to identify like some of them fall back some of them feel the warmth tears rolling mm -hmm. are there any ways to identify that you've received we believe in the faith we believe in faith and spiritually that yes it's been imparted and i've received it mm -hmm. i have no doubts but uh, on the uh, uh, realistic like you know feel sense is there any way see the anointing can be tangible at times Okay. But we should not depend on that all the time. So when we talk about the manifestation of the anointing um, or the presence of God, when we study about the presence of God, God's presence can manifest, you know, like he's the fire uh, or, or uh, the wind, right? So these are all the manifest, the way God manifested himself and his presence can manifest like that among us right now. So when, let's say, I got touched by the Holy Spirit, as you're saying, you know, some feelings, mm, I feel warmth, I feel cold, all that can happen. But what I'm trying to say is, in the absence of a feeling, let's go by faith. Every time if you look for a feeling, I, I, where, is, where is our faith? Yeah. So don't depend on the feeling. Yes, yes, Andrew. Teacher, I have heard some teachings like uh, the still uh, the, the 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 people who died in the Bible, no anointed people. Mm -hmm. The anointing is still on the earth. Mm -hmm. like, uh, uh, they give example of uh, Elisha when mm -hmm. he was dead, and after some years, and even they give some uh, example of John the Baptist that he was moved in the spirit of uh, Elijah. Uh, 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 uh. Yes. How, is it true or? Uh, Okay, so you're saying the anointing of the dead is still on the earth, right? Yes, yes. yes. So, see, as I mentioned earlier, um, the anointing can be transferred to the people who are living. So we look at it that way. Okay, so what good is an anointing if it is still on the earth somewhere? Anointing is for us to put it to use. So obviously, God transfers anointing uh, of the people of old. He can transfer the anointing over our lives. Today, if we desire it, we can receive from the people that we read about. You know, we read about so many people, God's generals. We read about so many uh, people in the Bible. And if we desire that kind of anointing, yes, God can uh, impart it to us. Uh, but I don't think we should focus so much on it, Andrew. Thank you, teacher. Yeah, because there are, there's been a lot of um, error uh, or people get into extremes over this matter of uh, Elisha and his anointing being in his bones. You know, some, uh, you know, that story, right? Like uh, some dead person touches uh, Elisha's grave and he comes alive and they say, oh, the anointing is still in the bones. Yeah, I mean, that incident happened, uh, but... We must not stretch it. You know what I mean? So we just leave it at that. Yes, teacher. Thank you so much. Yeah, great. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. So let's um, keep moving on. If there's any doubt, you can always ask. Now, the next point is impartation comes from God. It does not come from a person. So remember? When Elisha, Elisha said, uh, I want, give me a double portion of your anointing. Elijah never said, okay, come, I'll give you. Reason is, it was not Elijah's anointing. See, we are all carriers of the anointing, but it's the anointing of God. So, giving and taking anointing. I'm giving you, I'm giving her, giving him. I can't give. God has to give 
it has to come from above it has to come from the spirit of god that's why even impartation is an act of faith we put our faith in god and we pull on the anointing and it's god who releases us releases it into our life so anointing comes from god you and i just by laying hands right like on people's heads we can't yes by faith i can release but ultimately god is the one who makes that transfer he says okay take i am giving you so anointing comes from god okay so let's remember that now why are we um, making this point because the tendency is even with a good heart see we want to grow in god we want to manifest uh, the supernatural miracles what people tend to do is they run after pastors leaders conference workshop oh i have to meet this man of god meet this woman of god and then they will lay hands on my head they'll give me the anointing so we shouldn't be chasing human beings because anointing does not come from human agency anointing comes from god okay yes bless see it's about that only one see uh, i have seen many pastors chill like they'll do they'll keep a separate service like benediction service so they'll anoint the person as a pastor mm -hmm. so my even i asked many times because i didn't got any they didn't give any anointing means benediction service for me so normally the pastors will come they'll arrange a special meeting and the the one boy or whatever who may be they'll kneel down in the stage and pastors will come and they'll tell uh, not only god's anointing the pastors also should do the this benediction is it needed ma'am means god will anoint okay but is it needed a pastor also should come and we should keep a special service for that benediction service and all hmm see it's a matter of faith as i explained earlier uh, which can be done even without like a lot of uh, uh, you know pomp and glory like that so even a simple prayer if some of the pastors pray over that person they can still receive right so it's not necessary but normally the, the pastor and who is taking the benediction which it, it will be fine means it should be fine ma'am or uh, uh, means i saw even personally my dad told me not only god's anointing the the people's sake also should be there for being a pastor or should for anointing see the goodwill of of uh, men of god in our lives the their their favor their appreciation and you know that kind of that also brings their blessing on our lives right so that we should have their goodwill uh, but ultimately anointing will only come from god like the pastors can pray over us and all that but the actual transaction happens you know with the lord only so that's why i'm saying it's not necessary so even if uh, let's say they um, in a simple way also they just pray over that individual who's taking over it should be fine it should be fine yeah i i don't know if i addressed your question correctly okay great thank you uh, yes uh, angeline uh, i'll come to you next yeah pastor just a follow up question to what we discussed what you just said the anointing comes yes. from god and we should really not mm -hmm. focus uh, i've seen mm -hmm. a lot of um, like prophets they call uh, their prophets uh, mm -hmm. who have who have the prophetic gifts who uh, say like um, uh, you come and touch my arm you come and touch my hand you will feel god's anointing you will fall by the glory is that something mm -hmm. that is right because that's bringing a very negative picture that they are passing on that anointing is it okay is it right i think you you said it yourself uh, angeline it that's not how we see things happening uh, uh, in in the early church also right people just coming and touching and taking the anointing here and there there are examples where we see the flow of the anointing so it's a reality things happen like this but to as i told andrew to take it to the next level and stretch it you know and make it a doctrine um that it's not necessary first of all and uh, based on what's happening it doesn't glorify god also right like the way people are trying to get the anointing from some person in whom it's flowing then where's our faith in god if we, if it's all about touching someone and getting the anointing 
Yeah, right, Pastor. I also, just to add, uh, they also, I also heard them saying, like, uh, you take the food from my plate, you'll get the anointing mm -hmm. and all that. So, obviously, that's bringing a very negative picture. It's not glorifying God in any way, right? Yeah, see, because um, the same person who wants to release the anointing can release it in many ways. A simple prayer would do. Instead of me saying, you know, unless it's a one of something unusual where god says okay lay your hands or you know uh, some something like touch this or something like that one off that's understandable but constantly if it's all about you know uh, touching or take my things or eat my food it's it's too much <laughs> and we don't see any uh, uh, biblical pattern to this by simple praying also they can release the anointing no why should somebody eat my food to get my anointing? Yes, Pastor. Thank you. That clarifies. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. Uh, yes, uh, success. Uh, we'll come to you. All right. Uh, good morning, ma. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Yeah. Um. In my. Yeah. In this uh, part of the war, uh, many people mm. believe laying hands. Shaking the, anointed, shaking the anointed man of God is only way of transferring the anointing. I also want mm. to say uh, it's a very danger for a man to lay hands on you because we can see everywhere we can see people performing miracles. Mm. We don't know the what I mean how he got his anointing. So anointing to me, anointing comes from God. Yes, you can admire someone mm. and if someone's anointing, you can but when you have the spirit of God in you, you can be able to decide who is actually carrying the anointing, the genuine anointing. So anointing mm. comes from God. If we can seek God individually, seek him in truth, we will get anointed because God is one in charge here. But if you are waiting for your animal to lay hands on you for transferring anointing, yes, we, we saw in the book of El 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 when Elijah said, El Elijah said, if you see me depart, you will have all the anointing. He didn't lay hands on Elisha. So we should not be carried away by laying hands of or, or in order to transfer anointing. Anointing comes from God. That's my own point. Because Amen. someone can lay hands on you and transfer the money anointed to you we anoint to you thank you mm -hmm. amen brother wanted to <laughs> just uh, stand up and you know say amen to that thank you brother success for sharing your point of view you're right anointing comes from god so he just elaborated it further to make the point yes can we receive anointing from angels uh, like david oh jacob he, he fight with an angel yeah so see we understand that that was god though it says yeah though it says uh genesis 32 when he wrestled with god right because you have other passages that also talk about how he wrestled with god and he received the blessing so it was not an angel um and therefore Bible tells like no one seen god face to face mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, uh, but see, in the Bible, there are some instances where it's it's called, um, I forget what it's called, epiphany, I think, like where, yeah, momentarily God, um, in, a, in a tangible way, God is pre present. Obviously, we, we cannot see him, we, we've not seen him in his glory like that, but uh, God makes himself visible in this way, like Mount of Transfiguration, where you just saw the glory of Jesus. So you have some examples of God presenting himself. So it's one of those examples. Yes. Yeah. There's no giving, taking, anointing as far as angels are concerned. So anointing is from God and anointing is for people.
keys to supernatural keys to anointing we, <laughs> i think we uh, we are, this is the third class that we are but it's an important subject let's see maybe i'll do a couple of recordings that way we'll finish the last few portions but good i'm happy that all of us are thinking and asking feel free i didn't mean to stop you if you had a question teacher you know, yes yes yeah, uh, what about like oil anointing prayer no they lay hands on and they pray yes so is it, uh, it's it's biblical right yeah it's biblical it's Amen. biblical yeah. uh, we see that in um, james 5 no james 5 where james says if anyone sick among you then let him call the elders of the church um, and, and you know they will uh, anoint with oil and pray a prayer of faith so it's given for us in scripture so we can follow it uh, but then again let us remember that it's not about the oil because in the bible we see unusual anointings uh, in fact that's that will bring us to our next section here where we say that the anointing it flows uh, remember jesus said out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water so john 7 was 37 and 39 so this is how we imagine it where it is flowing the power the presence of the holy spirit is flowing so one of the ways in which it can flow is through material objects also so that's why when somebody uses oil it's not about the oil oil is ordinary oil you know you can use coconut oil you can use uh, uh, which other oils are that tell me please olive oil olive oil yeah olive oil any oil right we take the oil it's not about the oil but by faith what's happening a release of the anointing through that material so then the person receives healing so does that make sense uh, andrew yes, teacher thank you thank you so much yeah yeah thank you uh, there's an example of materials even in acts 19 handkerchiefs uh, were taken from uh, paul and people were healed delivered with the cloth so what is a cloth special no the anointing the power of god is just working through any material so sometimes maybe we can pray over water or you know anything you just pray over some material and uh, or you're praying over the food that the sick person can eat maybe they can only eat a banana pray over that and release the anointing the power of god works in their lives so that's the way we look at it but it can go through material objects yes diksha i just want to know your view like there are some pastors in north india i have seen like as we are discussing about oil and water like it's god's anointing only over that water and oil but they will sell that oil and water like in money so some <laughs> people are really need it but they can't I mean, afford it yeah they can't afford it yeah. so what is like it's it's not right now to... yeah so see the overall pattern of jesus's ministry it is supernatural but at the same time uh, we know that you know what did jesus freely you have received freely give go into all the world make disciples and then uh, you shall lay hands on the sick and they will recover so not withholding the power of god from anybody now if people are charging uh, and someone has to pay to access it it's obviously not conforming to the pattern of jesus's ministry so that's not right as i've been saying no earlier a couple of instances we took and we said we should not stretch it to the extreme yeah anointing can be carried through material objects but what is the stretching uh, in this merchandise people are selling oil people are selling something keychain this that touch it get the anointing that's too much that's not how it should be yes thank you yeah yeah anything rupas same point here yeah sure yeah so we shouldn't make it like that and moreover it becomes uh money making <laughs> more than like if we really wanted a lot of people to be healed why are we selling it see if jesus would have uh, um 
asked us to pay for the gospel, he'd be very rich. But that's not freely you have received, freely you give. That's how, that's the pattern Jesus taught us. So then uh, in this matter, yeah, we can't do that. Even to give value, you're making it inaccessible. What, what about the person who does not have that 10 rupees? Yeah, how will they get healed? Right. Yes. Okay, so one more point about the impartation, coming back to our notes, uh, page 11, is when we receive impartation, it must be nurtured and developed. So again, going back, just for the sake of example, I'm using names, okay? So uh, not for any kind of promotion. Like imagine, you know, Billy Graham, I want his anointing and I got his anointing also. Now, anointing is not like, uh, I have anointing, make it shine, keep it in the showcase. I got, I got Billy Graham's anointing. It's of no use. It, it's got to grow in me. Now, if the impartation has taken place, one needs to grow. Now, if that anointing is manifesting as a teaching anointing, we keep going to the next level because we are using that anointing. Uh, you know, we are, uh, again, uh, dedicating ourselves in various ways to increase the anointing in our lives. So anointing has to be nurtured. Just because I got the anointing of some man of God, some woman of God, that's not the end. That's the beginning. It's like, OK, I'm giving you something precious. Now use it. Make it grow. We have to be good stewards of the anointing. It's just the starting point. And from there, one has to um, like use it and see its power. So let me uh, quickly include a few more things here. Uh, one is regarding administering the anointing. We've already said that it flows like a river, the presence of God, the power of God. So how to release a greater move of the anointing or the power of God? There are many ingredients that will make this possible for us. One, of course, is faith. Faith on our part faith on the part of the uh, people whom we are ministering to, the greater the faith, the greater the flow of the anointing. So we already talked about how the word of God will bring that faith, expectation levels. So faith will bring a greater flow of the anointing. Yes, touch is there, as we stated earlier. Uh, even when Jesus, Mark 5, the lady comes, she touches the hem of the garment and Jesus says um, like who touched me because like power went out of me so yeah it's flowing we are not negating that it does flow but we must use it in a way that honors God not like you know how we said earlier to stretch it to the extreme the spoken word spoken word meaning uh, when we declare when we release the prophetic word okay we'll anyway come to all of that uh, proclamation we'll cover later but when we speak like god is doing this he's healing right now he's he's uh, breaking the the chains over your life as we are saying it the power flows and people come back and they say pastor when you said that something happened what happened flow of the anointing right so we need to be sensitive to the holy spirit it's not that it will always be one way. So the more we are sensitive to the spirit, the spirit will guide us. Okay, now lay hands or speak the word or, you know, anything else, a material like take oil. Only sometimes we say, uh, if you have oil, please bring. We want to pray. Not every time because we are moving the way the spirit is moving, the flow of the anointing. Follow that and then use all of these ways to release it through some material things we can do or action. You know how um, how um, Jesus said, take up your bed and walk, stretch forth your hand. Some action will also release the power of God. So there are times when we may have to uh, instruct people to do something. Only then they will see the manifestation. So what are hindrances? Obviously unbelief because faith causes a greater flow. Unbelief will stop the flow of the anointing then unwilling to step out don't quench the spirit paul wrote what is quenching the spirit when we are 
not willing to take that leap of faith you know to release the prophetic word or to pray for someone or proclaim the word we hold back we're like oh will god really work the more we hold back we are stopping the flow of the spirit unwilling unwilling to step out unwilling to take risks anointing is there i may be carrying some mighty anointing you know hey allen miracle power oral roberts i could be carrying but it's not flowing because the way those people stepped out boldly they went they prayed they ministered but what's happening to me i am holding back and that will stop the flow of the anointing uh, and of course you know any kind of um, uh sinfulness in our lives even that it's always the works of the flesh are always a hindrance to the work of the spirit so we need to constantly check ourselves and uh, be aligned to what god wants okay so we've kind of touched upon the basics here of the anointing but there's so much more as i shared with us please do look up the sermon section and there's a there's a full sermon or maybe two on impartation okay yeah so key is like we shouldn't run behind people ultimately it's come anointing comes from god okay yes uh, now daniel has something here he says ma'am if a person is anointed what are the basic symptoms which can be seen so if a person is anointed uh, uh, daniel in the in the area of their anointing we can see god at work so let's say if someone is anointed to again going back to teaching we can see that firstly they are able to teach clearly there's an ease of of uh, doing that um, ministry secondly that people are blessed and there are results so the manifestation or the symptoms as you put it are the fruit check for the fruit is it bearing fruit for the kingdom of god are people blessed ha huh, then anointing is working if there is no fruit someone is going on doing those things but nobody's faith is increasing in god then there is no fruit and anointing is there means there should be fruit no always check for the fruit daniel so that's the short answer check for the fruit okay we have one minute uh if there's any final question we can quickly address it and we are going to close ha huh? yeah so uh, akil is asking checking for the fruit it doesn't mean that i am judgmental yeah it, it, it's fair we must check for the fruit see because even um the father in john 15 you know he's he's pruning he's cutting off and uh, john 15 says the fa the like god is glorified when you bear fruit that's not being judgmental it's just looking for the outcome of the power of god all right so with that we conclude uh, this fifth key of the anointing we'll continue with god's presence and glory uh, uh, and just to let all of us know that there is a youth missions conference that's happening next week so uh, apc youth missions conference so all of our residential students are going for that and so online students uh, i'll do a pre recording and post it for us on next friday we won't have a class like this but you can go through that uh, recording and that should cover our next topic okay so just uh, for all of us to know with that let's close off uh, i think i'll request uh, sister gertrude sister uh, what time is it where you are right now uh, sister it is uh, i'm in uh, goa sister oh you're you're here oh, okay okay then that's uh, that's fine now i hope it's, it's not too same time stay at time okay great um sister can you lead us in prayer and we'll close yeah sure sister yeah sure thank you lord
for the word we have learned today, my master, about your greater part of anointing, your divine anointing, my master. I pray that everyone who is connected to this class, my master, will be anointed with your mighty power, my master, that they will grow, my master, in your word, in your truth, and whatever you are teaching us, my master, that we will experience your anointing in our daily life, my master. Especially we pray for the spiritual gifts, my master, the students and the faculty who are desiring my master that you will answer their prayers my master thank you for all that we have learned today my master in the mighty name of jesus i pray amen 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 and in conclusion please always remember we are already anointed okay so yes. all of us are anointed god bless you bye for now take care